Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update. Saturday, June 17th, around 7.45 p.m., 2023. Greenland ice continues to impress. The surface mass budget has been increasing day after day, reached a maximum now at six gigatons of ice on June 15th, and it has been gaining ice the entire melt season. But the big story in the U.S., another round of storms Saturday night brings tornado and hail risk to Oklahoma. Keep calm. It's boom time. Yeah, severe storms, big ale, and tornadoes possible tonight in Oklahoma City. All modes of weather possible. Damaging winds, big hail, isolated tornadoes, and localized flooding. Storms are expected to first develop in the northwest part of the state late Saturday afternoon and then expand and spread east during the evening and quickly race their way across the southeast. Enid is currently under severe weather risk as well. Heavy hailstorm impacts Boulder County crops, crushing farms literally obliterating everything they had worked for. And here's the full forecast. Severe weather from the plains to the southeast. Dangerous heat in the southeast. Severe thunderstorms are expected from the central plains to the southeast with a threat for damaging hail and severe gusts. And a few tornadoes in a corridor from Colorado to Arkansas. There are flash flooding concerns over portions of Florida's central Gulf Coast. And dangerous heat continues in the south-central U.S. and parts of Puerto Rico. Critical fire persists in the southwest as well. Here are the fire risks. Click on your county for more info. The critical heat watch here is because of the dew point, not because it's hot. It's barely above 100. But with the dew point, it feels more like 120. So unbearable humidity in Louisiana and Texas, the nexus of the Schmexis. So stay indoors and turn those ACs or those swamp coolers on. Let's move the GFS model back. And you could see those storms exploding tonight over Kansas and Oklahoma. So heads up if you're in that region. Quickly, it's going to move into Arkansas tomorrow and into Louisiana. So severe weather threat will quickly diminish. Looks like here by Monday. So Now the good news is lots of precipitation is moving up in the Pacific Northwest here in the form of snow and rain. You see that? And that's extending all the way up into Canada and Alberta and Saskatchewan. A lot of these fires are being put out. Good news. There's just a few dozen fires left in all of Canada. There were hundreds here weeks ago. So good news. The fires are getting put out, which means a lot less thick smoke in the U.S. And maybe after this round of rain and snow, we might get back down to a more manageable number of fires. There is a tropical disturbance with a 60% chance of formation. AL92, and it's headed towards us. Now, a quick Arctic update. A lot of people posting nonsense about the Arctic having an ice-free event in the next five years. Yeah, they said that 20 years ago was going to happen 10 years ago, and it never happened. And now we are at a nine-year, this is a 10-year Arctic ice high now. 10-year Arctic ice area high. As we ever increase, in just a few days, we might be at an 11-year high. Arctic ice and Arctic ice extent and area are growing, not shrinking, as they would have you believe. And another thing is growing. We kicked off the podcast is Greenland's surface mass budget. It has gained more ice in the last three years than ever in recorded history. No one is reporting on that. Everything is saying that Greenland is catastrophically melting when you can clearly see there has been no melting for about nine months whatsoever. And the last month, we're now in the melt season. We are growing record ice growth during the melt season, five gigatons June 15th. Seismic update, no quakes of note. Interesting rumbler on the East Coast here. Holy mackerel, 2.6 in Pembroke, Virginia. And there is a slight uptick here around Puerto Rico. So we're keeping a close eye on that as something fantastic may be happening in that Puerto Rican trench, perhaps. Worldwide Volcano News Update, everything acting normal, albeit slightly uptick. Mayon continues to puff and pass. Popo has some elevated activity. We also have Nevado de Ruiz to 20,000 feet. Suanosima also coming in with a small puff and a pass. Here we have an update on Kilauea Volcano. Strong lava fountains followed the Southwest Cone Summit collapse. Several lava falls at the lake yesterday. 
Space weather, all is quiet on the sun. At solar max, we are in grand solar minimum settings. The sunspots are tiny and they are doing nothing. The only thing that could potentially give us some space weather is coronal hole 14 and 13, which may be geo-effective in 24 to 48 hours. So we could see some elevated KP like we did from the last coronal hole, bring us all the way up to 6.3. Now, a lot of you have seen this headline, and I believe it's complete nonsense. I'm going to look deep into it and do a deep dive on a separate podcast. Humans have pumped enough groundwater to change the tilt of the earth. Now, the reason that's ludicrous is because groundwater is contained in the crust. And if you blow up a balloon to three feet in diameter, the thickness of the plastic would be the thickness of the crust. So no, no amount of pumping groundwater can affect the earth in any way. It's so minuscule. This is just another way to blame you for being a bad human and scaring you to death, to comply. Now, fossil study challenges long-held theory on Fibonacci spirals found in nature. A 3D model of a 407 million-year-old plant fossil has overturned thinking on the evolution of leaves. The research has also led to fresh insights about spectacular patterns found in plants. The research published in the Journal of Science overturns a long-held theory around the famous pattern in nature. Paleontology PhD student at University College Cork, Holly Ann Turner, is the first author on the study and conducted the research while an undergraduate student. The finding indica indicates that the arrangement of leaves into distinctive spirals that are common in nature today were not common in the most ancient land plants that first populated the Earth's surface. Instead, ancient plants to were, were found to have another type of spiral. This negates a long-held theory about the evolution of plant leaf spirals, indicating that they evolved down two separate paths, or perhaps the Fibonacci plants are from an alien planet and only recently fell to Earth in one of our most recent mass extinctions. Panspermia much? Now, guys, go check out our latest radio show and podcast Lee and I did this morning, Catastrophic Pole Shift Hypothesis. Is there any evidence? We go over all the geologic evidence for or against it. So tune in in just a few minutes after this show to have your mind blown. That's over at Magnetic Reversal News, and the links will be below. Also, save the date. What's happened here? September 16th and 17th, 2023, the 34th annual Crestone Energy Fair. Reimagine self, village, nature. Come see Lee and I all weekend in one of the most sparsely populated areas and the most awesome places on earth, Crestone, Colorado. And if you haven't heard, the feds are quietly dropping charges against Democrat donor Sam Bankman Freed in his multi billion dollar FTX scam. This guy may walk, and we might not even know it. What say you? Leave a comment below. And that's a boom to knowledge. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Give us a thumbs up. It helps with the algorithm. Become a Patreon. Support the work we do. The most important thing you can do is share this video as we are shadow banned and we need your help to grow. We love you. Be safe and tune in over at Magnetic Reversal News in just a few minutes for catastrophic pole shift hypothesis. No news.